Coming up on today's show, BMW puts another nail in the coffin of diesel and pulls all diesel models from sale in the US, Tesla and its customers help in the fight to get away from Hurricane Florence, and Hyundai builds an Ionic EV race car with a 200 horsepower Kona electric motor in it. These stories and more coming next. Happy Friday, folks. It's time for yet another roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transport. And we're starting with the news of a death in the United States, that of the diesel BMW. Earlier this week, BMW of North America announced that it would end sales of all diesel powered models in just a few short months, replacing them instead with plug in hybrid variants for the 2019 model year onwards. These new models won't just be token plugins, however. The new 2019 BMW X5 xDrive 45i Performance is expected to offer more than 40 miles of all electric range per charge, thanks to a larger battery pack than its predecessor. And with the iX3 soon to enter production, it really does look like BMW was following through on its plans to eventually dump the pump. It's official, the 2019 Leaf E Plus isn't quite here for the 2019 model year yet but it will be sometime next year. Announcing pricing for the 2019 Nissan LEAF in the US, Nissan confirmed that for now its plug-in hatchback will only be available with a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack, with a longer range model due next year to be sold alongside the current capacity variant. Prices for the 40 kilowatt hour 2019 starts from $30,885, with packages and trim largely unchanged, save for a rear door alert feature, which is now included as standard. If you've been watching the news, then you'll know that Hurricane Florence is currently bearing down hard on the southeastern states of the United States. But earlier this week, before it made landfall, Tesla announced it would unlock additional capacity on all Tesla Model S and X cars with a software-restricted 60 kilowatt hour battery pack to allow customers in the path of the storm to gain extra range. Tesla unlocked all supercharging for customers in the danger zone, allowing them to charge for free in order to get to safety. At the same time, longtime EV advocate Lanny Hartman built a special page on his website to help electric car owners locate charging and get to safety. Thanks to both Tesla and Lanny for this exemplary behaviour. And if you were affected by the storm, I hope you and yours are all safe. Well, Volkswagen has been talking up its plans to lead the electric car world now for years. But this week it unveiled details of the first factory retrofit it will carry out to enable it to try and achieve that goal. It's announced that work will begin next year on converting its first plant to producing just electric cars, aiming for 100,000 EVs to be rolling off the production line there every year by 2020. That would represent going from pretty much zero to Tesla levels of production in just 12 months. It's going to be interesting to see if it hits its own targets. Tesla has yet again made changes to its Model 3 configuration and pricing this week as it rushes to get increased production towards the end of Q3. In addition to adding an extra US$1,000 to the price of the Model 3 dual motor, Tesla has said that it will cut down the number of standard colors you can choose for your Model 3 from 7 to 5. Obsidian black and metallic silver, the two colors now cut from standard ordering, will still be offered by Tesla but you'll have to pay a lot more for them as they will now be classed as special orders. Elon Musk's other terrestrial transportation firm, The Boring Company, earned its self-approval this week from the Hawthorne City Council to build a prototype garage. What's special about it? Well, unlike your regular garage, this one has a lift in it that could transport your car down to the Boring Company network below, allowing you to avoid all those traffic jams. It's very cool, but it does confuse me since a few months ago, the Boring Company said it was focusing on just passenger pod transportation, not personal car transportation. Maybe this is a feature that it wants to develop after that. With the launch of its e-tron electric SUV set for Monday next week, Audi made the final media push by announcing that it worked with charging networks across Europe to offer European customers single sign-on capabilities across every single charging network, from 11 kilowatt three-phase units all the way up to 150 kilowatt DC quick charging stations. It's not clear if Audi will be offering a similar service elsewhere, but with a single car taking care of access, and billing, it's certainly better than some of the alternatives out there. If you want to watch the reveal live, it's going to be streamed online late on Monday night, Pacific Coast time.
It's time for Short Shorts. We're starting with Aston Martin, which released a pair of teaser images this week for its limited production Rapid E electric car. Production starts next year and the company is promising 200 plus miles of range and next generation CCS quick charging. Tesla has officially announced the free supercharging for life portion of its referral program will end this Sunday. Anyone who uses a referral code after this point to buy a Model S, X or 3 performance will get $100 of free supercharger credits instead. ChargePoint announced this week that it intends to increase the number of deployed charging stations on its network from 54,000 today to more than 2.5 million by 2025. It's also begun upgrading its network with more powerful stations. The firm All Solid State Batteries from Colorado says it's closed a $20 million Series A investment round, with several big automakers contributing to that amount. Its batteries are said to have better energy density, be safer, and have lower costs than current lithium-ion cells. A Finnish company called RMK unveiled a new electric motorcycle this week. It's got a claimed top speed of 100 miles an hour, a range of up to 248 miles in ideal conditions, that's 300 kilometers, and a hubless rear wheel. Meanwhile, Arizona-based Atlas Motor Vehicles has just announced the XT, an all-electric pickup truck that it says will cost $45,000. It will go anywhere, have 12 inches of ground clearance, rapid charge in 15 minutes, and tow and haul with the best of them. A small urban runabout called the Esprit that its creators say can be stacked end-to-end -end in a line when parking to reduce parking space was demonstrated in Scotland this week. They're a little quirky looking and they can be moved like shopping trolleys, but I'm certainly interested to see how they catch on. Marcolino, the tiny two-seat electric Isetta lookalike, has hit 8,000 reservations worth 100 million euro. Most customers appear to be based in Germany, but orders have flooded in from around the world. Production begins soon. GM has issued a recall on certain 2018 and 2019 model year Volt and Volt plug-in cars in North America after faulty rear brake pistons were discovered that could lead to longer stopping distances. The fault has been traced to improperly manufactured parts. Some Tesla customers reported this week that Tesla's latest over-the-air software update switched off their car's autopilot functionality. Tesla says it's aware of the problem and should have a fix by the end of this week, so just about the same time as this is being published. DS Automobile unveiled its DS3 Crossback this week. It will launch in the second half of next year with a 50 kilowatt hour battery, 100 kilowatt motor, and both AC three phase and DC quick charging. Prices have yet to be announced. You might think of McDonald's as the last place you'd expect to promote electric cars, but a partnership between McDee's and Vattenfall will see every single McDonald's in the Netherlands get rapid charging stations from 2018 onwards. Good on you, Ronald. And that's your short shorts. As always, tell us what you think in the comments below. Over the past few years, BMW has been taking part in the Charge Forward pilot project in California. It gave i3 owners a chance to earn a little money by letting the electricity company start and stop their cars charging as grids demands changed. While the project didn't include a two-way power transfer, it's now been hailed as success, showing that using the right tech, customers and utility companies can benefit from responsive electric car charging governed by the grid itself. The Los Angeles Clean Tech Incubator has announced a new partnership between automakers, governmental bodies, companies and utility firms to push towards making LA zero emission by 2028. The project has some pretty big backing, including former Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, and is set to reach its goals by the time the Olympics arrive in LA in 2028. Tesla has autopilot features in its semi-electric truck, but now Volvo does too. It unveiled the all-electric Vera autonomous concept truck this week in Sweden. With no driver on board, there's no need for a cab, so the tractor unit itself is quite slim. It's large and powerful though, enough to pull a full Class 8 trailer. Rather than travel long distance, Volvo's vision involves using Vera trucks to transport loads short distances, handing them off to another Vera truck to continue the trip. A British firm from Bristol called Vertical Aerospace has entered into the already crowded race to bring a fully autonomous flying taxi to market this week with its Vertical Electric VTOL craft. Unlike some of the competition, however, its team of engineers come from a wide background, including Formula One, Energy and Defence, and local companies Rolls-Royce and Airbus. Test flights have been completed, but there's not a public timeline I'm aware of for market readiness. And 
finally. The Hyundai Ioniq EV has been on sale for a while now and has recently been joined in the Hyundai stable by the Kona Electric. The Kona has a far more powerful electric motor and far more advanced battery pack, but a team of engineers at Hyundai have just built a mashup between the two cars. The result? A race-prepared Ioniq with 200 horsepower, something the company says it hopes will allow it to win the annual Optima Batteries search for the ultimate streetcar competition. I love that engineers are tweaking this thing, but here's a question. Why didn't it have a 200 horsepower motor to start with? And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. As usual, like, comment, subscribe, and support us using the links below. And if you want to show your love without spending any money, make sure you watch those ads in our videos or give us some social media love instead. Share the stories, tell everyone about us. Thanks for joining me. And as always, don't forget to be better, smarter, and kinder. Keep evolving.